I've been a dreamer my whole life. I've been a dreamer my whole life. They told me I wasn't going to be able to do some of the things that God has allowed me to do, and I just kept on dreaming and kept on saying, yes, I can. For those of you who don't know, I just finished my second book. I'm working with a publisher now. I had four publishers, major publishers, accept my unedited manuscript to publish it. That's all Jesus. But what I'm saying to you, if I would have told somebody that I wanted to be a writer at 10, you know, they'd probably say, man, I don't know if that's going to happen. Okay. That's your business, not mine. But every child that I mentor, and I taught high school for a few years, on and off for eight years. I taught junior high and high school, so I had a chance to stay in front of people and tell those kids that you're going to be exceptional. And I know your grades are, are not good, but they're going to get better. And I talk to the parents. I say, here's what you need to do to get your son and daughter raised better. And I'm willing to help them. I'll stay after two hours after school to work with them. Because I believe the future is in them. And they're going to be something exceptional. So that's what I did. I started mentoring in the eighth grade. Alexander, Virginia had a program for junior high students to teach and mentor elementary school students called C, Social Environmental Education. And I volunteered. I had no clue what I was doing, but they took us through a process of training, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this area since I was 13 years old. So do the math. I'm over 50, so do the math. And I love it, because I like to see these wonderful, amazing children be successful in God and be successful in their lives. That's what I do. I'm a conduit through Jesus. Remember, it's not so, your legacy is not based on what you leave in, it's based on what you leave in them. A willingness to, to accurately evaluate the mentees' progress. See, you have to take the mentees from A to Z. You have to work with them, you have to stick with them. Mentees, young ladies, young gentlemen, you have to be committed to your mentor. You have to know that this is a long haul. You got to change some of your attitudes. You got to change some of your attitudes. Because young people got attitudes now. They got young, they got attitudes because they listen to their friends and look at stuff on television. Mm -hmm. And we let them express their attitude at home. Mm -hmm. I was telling Sister Roberta, my mom had six boys and one girl, and she was five for five. My mom had one hand, and that hand did not play. Mm. She fixed us all. My mom didn't care. My mom didn't care about child protective services. When she told you something, you didn't do it. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what happened. I saw my brothers get a lot of stuff that I didn't get because I watched very clearly what not to do. Y'all not doing that. I'm trying to tell my mom one day. He said, "I'm not doing that. I'm tired of work." I was. Just, she hit him so hard. Oh, have mercy. I felt the punch. Yeah, it was a punch. She didn't do open hand. She hit it where it counted. Flexibility. Successful mentees recognize that relationships take time to develop and that communication is a two-way street. Here's the problem with mentee and mentors. You must communicate at all times. Let me tell you something. What I'm finding out as I walk in this journey, Dr. Hodges, is that most folks in churches, they don't leave the church because they don't like the pastor. They leave the church because they're communicating inaccurately and they're not communicating the right things. In yeah. relationship, when relationships bust up, it's not because the person did that, it's because nobody's talking. Young people, being curious to talk to your mentor, mentors, Speak with your children. Speak with the mentees that you're mentoring. Communicate with them. Listen, we in the technology age, shoot them a text, hit them up on Facebook, whatever. But communicate. And always let them know what's going on. What's the next step? Ability to recognize that mentoring is only one development tool. And it is. Mentors can save you time plus, save you time plus, inspire, teach, and encourage. One of the things I love about being a mentor is that I want to always be in a place of building. I call, I'm a carpenter. I'm a spiritual carpenter. Mm -hmm. I can go in and build. 
Because I know how to build. I know how to lay the foundation of Christ and continue to build the fruits of the Spirit. Love, meekness, kindness, gentleness. And I build. I had a chance to work with some kids, some young adults, while I was teaching up in Connecticut at a boys' boarding school. And I had a chance to work with some gifted and talented young men. Whew! One of the young men I work with now is a multi-millionaire. Multi-millionaire. Mm. Because he played basketball. Went to college, played at Rutgers. Played for three years, then went to the NBA, got drafted in the first round. My wife and I went to the 76ers game one day. They were playing the Sacramento Kings. He was on that team. He saw me in the audience and ran up mm. and gave me a hug. I said, Coach Steve, thank you for doing what you did. And all I did was talk to him about Jesus. <laughs> That's 